Page 31. Art of Manipulation, by R. B. Sparkman, 1978. Chapter 3. Tactic 2, How to Make a Slave Out of a Person. 3.4. People want what they cannot have. From this desire come many of humanity's great foibles. This trait causes people to want material possessions they can't afford. It leads men to burn themselves out pursuing women they cannot have, and it drives women to self-destruct over men they chase fruitlessly. Any person who can harness this law of human nature for his own purposes can wield an awesome influence over other people. As Bill no doubt realized, Intermittent reinforcement is the best tool for exploiting people's desire for things they can't have. When you use this tactic, you make the other person think that you're the thing he can't have. Or your business deal is the one he can't have. He can never take you for granted, because you alternate between the caress and the bite, between treating him well and treating him badly. He senses that he can't have you and his instincts make him want you, sometimes almost desperately. This vulnerability to intermittent reinforcement explains my date's situation, which looks ridiculous on the surface a beautiful girl scrambling after a man who beat her, when she could have her pick of men. Of course Bill had probably never heard of the pigeon experiment. And I doubt that the term intermittent reinforcement would have meant any more to him than amortizing his acial tuberosities. Rather, I assume that his technique emerged from years of trial and error in his love life. That's how most people learn it. If you asked Bill how this tactic works, he would likely reply, well, I treat women real nice most of the time. But if you want to control them, you've got to be mean sometimes to keep them on their toes? Before I go any further, I want to insert here that I don't condone beating women never having hit an adult in my entire life. Certainly there are many other ways to withdraw reinforcement. Also, considering the inroads the women's movement has made, I believe such a neo-Nazi tactic would prove counterproductive today. Since I act only as a reporter, debating the morality of intermittent reinforcement lies outside the boundaries of my calling. I only report what works, not what is moral or immoral. Finally, don't assume that just because this case dealt with a woman falling victim to intermittent reinforcement, that only men can use it. In fact, I've watched many more males fall for women who are using this tactic than vice versa. Page 33